word. Amen. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all with me. They, they, they believe the word of God. They believe what God said. And they stood on what God said. And because that, that word that they stood on and believed could not return void, it was going to prosper in what God sent it to do. So their reward was what they stood on. Amen. I, it reminded me, I don't know when I thought about this on Saturday. Because on Saturday, you know, we um, lay before God, you know, you before God. And before we go out, sometimes God don't show, some, sometimes he may show me or show probably show somebody else. Okay, what area are we going in? What are we going to do, right? And this time he happened to share with me and say, okay, we're going over by the bus. I knew exactly because it kept flashing in front of me. I knew where we were going. So it was the obedience of us going where God wanted us to go that stopped a young girl from committing suicide. Amen. God did not want that young girl to commit suicide, so he, so he revealed to his servants where he wanted to go. It was our obedience to it. It wasn't me. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it was God. And our obedience to going where God wanted us to go that produced the reward of a young girl not, a young girl not dying. Amen. Everybody say obedience to the word to the word of God. Hebrew, it's about obedience to the word. I think that's one of the strong, I think that's one of the areas that there's a great battle. Everybody say war and battle because the issue is what words are you listening to? Amen. Because if you can be obedient to the word of God that produce a reward, amen, the glory of God, then your disobedience to another word is going to produce what that, 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 that thing that kills, steal, and destroy. Now, another, our disobedience, and I, and, and I'm, I could not, I couldn't get it out of my head. I'm, I'm here thinking like, God, I'm so glad that we obeyed you. You know what I'm saying? Because people were being touched, people were being delivered. See, your obedience to the word of God will produce what God wants. Your disobedience to the word of God can produce what you want, but in what you want, there's going to be destruction. There's going, the, if Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. All Satan do is try to dress up the word as a lie. He tries to dress the word, his word up as something enticing. He tries to dress his seed up as something enticing that when you embark on that seed and you conceive it. And I, I, look, I thought that was so funny, and I wanna read this, to conceive means to become pregnant with. Amen? He wants to dress his word up so beautiful that when you conceive that seed, you become pregnant. And one thing about becoming pregnant, pregnant being pregnant changes you. Amen. When a woman gets pregnant, she conceives a seed and it begins to be, that seed begins to grow in her. It begins to produce whatever that seed is. So we have to be careful. I'm telling you, sons and daughters of God, be careful of the seeds that you are receiving that will find you will find yourself pregnant with something that's um, developing something in you that God never called it to be developed. Amen. But you conceived it. So I want to say, so we, we finished 12. I mean, we finished 12, right? I mean, finished 11. So I want to go into, because I want to tell you sometimes what makes us open to another seed. Amen. What makes sometimes people open to another seed? Let's begin to read at, uh, we at Hebrews 12 today. Let's start reading and read out loud and see what it say. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compa compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, how many of you know, we have, a, you in, when you're in the world, you have a lot of witnesses bearing bearing witness a witness is a that which testifies that is true amen we have a great cloud of witnesses you know over of that is testifying that god's word is true the bottom line when you read the bible when you read the hebrews these are real people in 11 amen and 11 they were real people moses was a real person amen a amen right um 
uh, Ahab, the, the people in the Bible were real people who received a word from God and believed and stood on that word of God and received the reward of them standing on that word of God. Amen. Amen. So they received the birth. They received the harvest. Remember what I said? Listening brings knowledge. Knowledge brings wisdom. Wisdom puts you in a position to make a wise decision. Why is that important? Because every decision is made out of words. Words produce seeds, and seeds grow a harvest. In other words, your life look like what you've been listening to. Amen? Your life look like. If you don't like your life, you got to change what you've been listening to. You got to change what you've been getting, what you've been allowing to, what your eyes and your ears have been intaking that's been birthing in you a position where you are. You can't, I don't care how, I'm going to tell you something. If you're not willing, this may sound like a very vulgar thing what I'm about to say, but I want you to see, but I, but I want you to grasp it. There need, some people, you need a spiritual abortion. You, you need an abortion. You need to kill that seed that is taking your life in an area. You need to uproot that seed that has your life manifesting and living and operating in a way that's contrary to God. Amen. You got to deal with that seed. You got to you got to curse that seed from the root. Amen. You got to curse that seed by the word of God from the root. The word of God is a two edged sword piercing. It has to get in and cut away the seed to renew your mind. It has to cut away the seed because the way your mind thinks, your mind is embedded with seeds that produce a behavior and a nature that's contrary to God. And that's why when you hear the word of God, you're at a battle. You become at a battle with what? To that, and that word is a knife cutting away that stronghold, cutting away that seed of that way of thinking that caused Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If I can't change how you think, you ain't going to change. Come on now. If you can't, the, the word of God says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So, what are you, so why do you think the word of God is so powerful? Why do you think that Satan, he don't, call, he don't mind if you do everything else. Just don't get in the word. Just don't get in the word. Why? Because the word is a two-edged sword. Cut, piercing. It's piercing. Cutting away a mindset that is attached to your flesh, attached to your desires. Amen? And, that, and that, that, that desire that you have, Satan's job is to what? Water and plant that seed he planted that it may birth in you a nature contrary to God. Amen? Causing you to operate. You know, do you think a girl woke up saying, do you think it was a girl woke up when she was three or four years old talking about, I want to go dance in a strip club? Do you think the way people are operating day to day? No, it is a mindset that is what? Bombarded with thoughts and seeds of perversion. Amen? And, that mindset, and the bottom line is, you got, God has to renew that mind. He has to renew that mind. Amen? Renew the way you think. Amen? And the way he renew that way you think, he puts you under the word. And I love, I love what the Lord says. He says in, in Psalms 24, 9, 10, he says, oh, lift up your gates. So it looks like it's time for you to lift your gates up. Amen. And I think, you know, the Bible says, the flood, the spirit of the Lord raises the standard. Amen. It's time for you to raise up, lift your head up. Amen. Oh, lift, it says, oh, lift up the head. One verse says, oh, lift up your head. Lift up your heads, oh, ye gates. Because your gates is in your head, your eyes, your ears. You listen to profanity all day and you wonder why you can't curse. You're in taking violence in every movie. You're in taking this violence and, and murder in every movie. And you wonder why you got a hot temper. And you're trying to get somebody to cast a demon out of hot temper. They ain't going to cast that demon out of you. Why? Because that demon's attached to your mindset. Amen? You, you wonder why you're full of lust in many other ways. Why? Because look what you're watching. Look what you intake, what you are intaking are seeds, and those seeds are taking root in the way you think, and they're producing a behavior that reveals that you have not been spending time with God. Amen? Are we, so God wants to deal with faith. This, this all makes sense in dealing with faith because faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. You want to know what warfare God has to deal with your mindset. He has to deal with your thinking pattern. He has to deal with them warped and perverted seeds. So he says in Psalms 24, 9, he says, oh, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And let the king of glory shall come in. Let the king of glory come in. 
the one say one verse says, who is mighty in battle. Amen. Let the Lord come in, who is mighty. In other words, but the Bible said, God, he's saying, lift up your, your, your ears, your eyes, and it began to let the king of glory come in. Amen. Let God come in what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're speaking. Let him come in, king of, who is mighty in battle. And he says, in verse 10, says, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. The Lord of hosts is the king. Let him be the host of, your, of how you see things, how you think. Let him come. And that's what's so interesting about that's why it's so important that when somebody gets saved, that you do not put them to work in the church. You do not tell them, you know, I don't care what your gifts are, what your talent. God is not interested in what you think you can do for him when you don't even know him. Because why? If you don't let God, that's why Jesus at 12 years old, it, that, that, did anybody ever think about this? Why is there no documentation between Jesus at the time when he was birthed and to the time he's at 12? 12 is the number of government. Amen. But what is, but then you have to study what took place at 12, that the number of government to understand what Jesus is all about. At the age of 12, they're going to, to they're going to uh, they're going to a ritual, right? And they go to the they go to the temple, and Jesus goes to the temple with them. And when they go to the temple, they found that when the ritual was over, see, they, they that's what sometimes see when you, some people they go to church and it's over, they leaving. You know what I'm saying? It was over. But Jesus, the word said, no, 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 y'all leaving. But he said, watch what he said. It ain't about you just coming here for no ritual. Come on, somebody. It ain't about you just coming. See, his family them came there for a ritual and they was gone. You know, so they came through that ritual. But and they were so far, because sometimes when you come doing what you gotta do, your mind set on, let me get back home and do what I gotta do. And they got on the way back home, they realized they done left the word. They done left the word. They done left their son Jesus. They done left the word in the church. And I believe Jesus is saying at 12, you need to stop coming to my house about rituals. He was about to end that mindset of rituals where you come and God. I just, and sometimes we got to watch ourselves too because you can be like, well, you know what? I'm on the praise team and I'm just saying this. I'm on the media team, whatever. So I'm going to come to church because I'm just coming to church to do a ritual. I'm just coming to, I'm not really coming to hear the word of God. I'm not really coming to be about my father's business. I'm not really coming to be, my, I'm coming for a ritual. I'm coming to do something that I think I need to do, something I may want or whatever. But when they left, they left the word there. How many know because Jesus was the word? He's the word, not was. He is the word. The word made flesh. Amen. They left the word. And it took them, I believe, it was three days before they noticed that they left. There was a while before they noticed that they had left the word. It's kind of interesting that you can come for a ritual and forget the most valuable thing you came with. And I believe it's like that too. We come to God for a ritual. We come to, but you forget the most valuable thing you should be getting from the church, and that's the word. Why? Because if you don't have the word, you cannot be about your father's business. Why? Because why? the word is the thing that changes you. It renews your mind. It renews your heart. The church has, we have failed. We have failed because we, took, we replaced the word with a bunch of rituals. And even in the Bible, he said, he said, they praise me with their mouths and they listen, but their hearts are far off. What, in that verse, he's talking about that, you know, we, we, we like to come to church and do rituals. We like to come to church. Well, you know, Easter, oh, everybody happy. They talk about, somebody told me, oh, you know what? Tomorrow is Ash Sunday. It's Ash Sunday. Like, they talk about, do you celebrate what? Ash what? I don't have no ritual. I live the word every day. The word is producing in me who Christ is every day. Amen. Holiness is being produced in me every day. The righteousness of God is being produced in me every day. Amen. He's putting me on the cross every day. We die daily. Amen. It ain't no ritual, God. He said the word, you're gonna, it's going to cost you to die daily. Amen. See, ritual people don't die daily. They just go visit God on the time of the ritual and they leave the word. And their life is a reflection that they leave the word. Because why? When you leave the word, your mindset is still of the old mindset. In other words, there are many people that, people like, why on Easter is the church so packed? Why on Christmas is the church? Why do they go on these rituals? Why? Because it don't change the mind. You just think you met a quota. You met a ritual standing. I'm going to see a play. I'm going to do that. In other words, the word never came, penetrated their minds. And then people sitting in the church, like, the word is not penetrating your mind. Why? Because your mind is on foolishness. It's engulfed it with 
thoughts of lust and perversion. It's engulfed it with your flesh and the things that you want and your ideal. So guess what? Your word is hard. Your heart is hard when it comes to the word. Why? Because you have replaced it with you and your desires. For the Bible says this. In James 1, 14, he says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, his desire, and enticed. You want something so bad in your flesh, and your, you, are drawn, you are drawn away from the word that would renew your mind. And you think because you keep a ritual that you're good with God. But that's kind of amazing because he said, I think it's in Matthew 15, he said, they praise me with their lips and mouth, but their heart, where's my heart? The heart is the intellect, your emotions and your desires, not this heart. He's talking about this heart, the heart that, where God dwells, the heart, where, how you think, how you feel and what you want. See, and Satan, no, if I can get into, if I can change how you think, I can change how you feel. If I can change how you feel, I can change what you want. So the word, so there's a battle of words. Amen. There's a battle of seeds. And when you get accepted by Christ, when you accept Christ, you are accepting him who begins to that's what I'm about to say, he tear down, uproot, then he build. He got to tear down all those thought patterns and mindsets that you had before. And that's why it's important that when you come to the church, you sit down at the feet. Don't think, see, this new church is let me impress God with my music. Let me impress God with my dance. Let me try. God is not impressed with the things you think you could do for him if you have not become like him. Because you're not really doing it for God. You're doing it for you. You're doing it to be seen in a generation that like likes and views. A generation that wants to be seen. But you can't truly influence until you die to yourself. Because unless a seed fall to the ground and die first, it abide alone. That word die means to be transformed. Amen? In other words, the word of God is transforming you from the old you to the new you. From the old fleshly you to the you to the you who you were called before the foundation of the world. And a lot of times you're gonna feel that battle going on right here in your heart. Amen. Are we getting this tonight? We gotta get this because it's gonna be where your big I was telling my daughter, I said last night, I don't know, I, I grabbed somebody and said, um, uh, and, and especially violence, man, you gotta watch violence because the violence and what you're watching will cause you to have a, a deep value of human life. People who keep watching keep people who keep watching violence, violence. I'm talking about. We like to talk about sex and other things and greed. Those things. What about violence? See, violence will put you in a mindset. Why do you think that dude can go in there and shoot that dude, or that girl can kill that person, or beat them down? Why do you think? Because there's a devalue of life. Why do you think women can commit abortion and men, men and women can commit abortion? Why? There is a devalue of life in the system of wickedness that promotes that life is not that valuable, that life is not more valuable than your dreams, hopes, and desires, that life is not more valuable than your dreams, hopes, and desires. And since life is not more valuable than your dreams, you will put something to death to obtain it. Because we don't understand the value of life. But to accept Christ, you have to understand the full value of life. Because he gave his life life because come on video game what's the ultimate what's the ultimate level of a video game to keep killing till you win that's what's right why would why would i why would i go watch halloween why would i go watch why the whole ob the object of the movie is to kill 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 and the wicked one never get killed And still, and still fear. See, violence, will, violence is a love stealer of people. Violence will cost you, it will steal your love for people. It will cause you not to really care about people. And America has become so violent, that's, not, that's why there's no longer outcry, a, a, a large, huge outcry. Well, baby's not being murdered. Because why? We see no value in a baby. We see, a, we see value in our so-called success. 
we see value. But how did, how do we get there? Them seeds of violence. You know, t- the movie Taken. Somebody do you wrong, just go through the whole movie killing someone and think that you're right because you're, you, your self-righteousness because they took your daughter. You think you have a right to go kill everybody. And we look at the whole movie and we're like, this is so good. And let him, he's just killing everybody. And what, what is that doing? It's inserting a thought in your mind when somebody do you wrong, that you have a right to destroy them and anyone that's with them. That's why today, instead of breaking up fights, we pull out cameras. Why? We want glory from the violence. The wickedness of violence. We're in the most domestic violent age where women and men, I mean, beating, people beating on their children, people beating on, men beating on women, women beating on men. People, it's the most violent age. It's one of the most violent ages ever. And it's a quiet violence. It's a quiet violence that entered into sex and where I'm going to beat on you, I'm going to spit on you, I'm going to treat you like a dog. The more violent it is, the more enticing it is to the flesh. The more you can degrade her or degrade him, the more enticing it is to the flesh. And God says this has to be destroyed. This mindset, this seed has to be destroyed. Amen. And what will destroy this seed is faith. Faith come by what? Hearing what? The word of God will begin to destroy them evil seeds, those yokes, those mindsets. Jesus said, what's so funny, Jesus said at um. Jesus said at the age of 12, they said, he said, I must be about my father's business. When he said I must be about my father's business, he was partaking of faith. Amen. He was partaking of faith. He was hearing the word. While his family was walking away from the ritual. I believe that God was revealing to us. Stop. Don't get caught up in the ritual. Be about your father's business. Sitting at his feet. Partaking of the word. We see it again. We see this. Well, you say, watch. We see the same scenario played out in another way. When? This time, instead of Jesus and his family, we see it, the scenario playing out with Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary Here we go again. Jesus walks in the house. You got God walking in the house. The word of God has walked in the house. And what does Mary, what does Martha do? She busy serving. She doing all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But she don't, does she not recognize what walked in the house? Does she not understand that this is what walked in the house is when Peter said, where shall we go? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. Y'all got to get what God is saying. What has walked in the house is what Peter said, where shall we go, Lord? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. You want eternal life. It's in the word. But when the word is being preached, you do, you, 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 what you doing? And the house of God has become a house of entertainment. That in a, the word, you know, I, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I've seen. I've seen people preach the word 10 minutes and prophesy out of it for three hours. Don't you ever believe that's God. Don't you ever believe that's God. You're going to preach the word for 10 minutes and then soon have some man sit there and tell you what God going to give you here and what God going to do. It. Really? Paul preached the word. Paul preached the word in the man for so many hours that when the man went to sleep and fell down and died, he laid upon the man, woke him up, and then preached the word some more. Why? Because it is the word of God that renews the mind. It is the word of God that attacks the enemy's stronghold. It is the word of God. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Martha, Mary, Martha was serving all over the place. Let me do this for God. Let me do that for God. Let me do that. But when Mary saw the word come in, the heavens and earth were declared, was spoken by the word. 
The very earth was spoken by the word. The very heavens was spoken by the word. A word that's fulfilling God's purpose. Not your dreams and desires and hope. Because a man get carried away by his own dreams and desires and hope. And then the Bible says, then come conception. Conception. He gets impregnated. Then the Bible says, then come sin. Then come death. He's impregnated because he didn't let the king of glory come in. The Lord, that's what he says, the Lord mighty in battle. Let him come in. Lord come out, why? So, he, so, so God's purpose can be fulfilled in your life. Like on Saturday, God's purpose, let me tell you something, Saturday, I would have been ready to stay home and eat some cereal and watch, you know, watch some TV, chill out. But God says, no, we're going over here. We're going to do this. Why? I got a daughter over there that's thinking about suicide and I need to send my word over there. Amen. It's the word of God. The heavens and earth was formed by his word. Because faith come by what? Hearing the word. In other words, what you stand on is the word. If God ain't said it, then if I was you, I wouldn't stand on it. Amen? You can want, we can want something to be done. If God ain't said it, it ain't being done, even if it's in his word. Say what? Yeah, because why? There are times in God's word, you got to find out what word is going for that situation. You might want somebody to continue to be on the earth. God says, no, I'm taking them to heaven. I'm taking them with me. Both of them in the word. Amen? Oh, it's the word. He says, this thing, this Martha, Mary is sitting at the feet. And the Bible said, Jesus, the word says she has chosen that which is good and everlasting. It's not that God is saying that servanthood is bad. But when the word is being released, servanthood comes second to that. Because you can't serve without knowing the heart you're serving for. Because I think one, one of the greatest deceptions that's going on today it, it, where Satan is really carrying people away, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust, his own desires, and enticed. I think what's happening is that what I noticed is what's happening. People desires, their desires, and what they are enticed for fame or notoriety or whatever the situation may be, or whatever, it's something different. They are saying, God, 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 and God never said anything to them about what they're talking about and what they're doing. And the reason they can't know God, they don't know God's voice well enough because they never really sat down to know his voice. They never really sat down to learn what he wants, what Abba wants. Because we live in a world that's speaking so loud what you want. And it has creeped into the church what you want, what you desire. And that's why the Bible says they got, that's why them churches flood when they sit there and prophesy three hours. Why? He's, when they sit there prophesying three hours, you know why they flood? Because they prophesy according to their own desires. And he said they was going to be carried away by their own desires. They're going to be enticed and carried away by what they wanted. Instead of what God wants. And what's lined up with what God is doing. Amen? So, this, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this this because, man, I, I thought this was so funny. I mean, I had in that dream, I, in, I had a dream where a bumblebee flew into the air. I was like, that's going to be really crazy. I saw this bumblebee float flying to his man. I'm like, a bumblebee flying to his ear? And I'm thinking when I woke up, I'm like, what's the, I'm thinking that can cause a lot of pain. And God said, so can the wrong word. He said the wrong word can cause a lot of irritation. A wrong word can cause a lot of aggravation. A long, the wrong word can cause division and separation. The wrong word is like something aggravating you in your ear and stinging you and, and giving you a great deal of pain because you're trying to operate in something that God did not say. 
And I'm like, I'm, y'all, I pray we hear what the Spirit of the Lord, because I saw it this plane. I'm like, the bee flew. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. If a bee fly into your ear, he still got his finger. So now he inside of you about to flick pain in you. In your hearing. About to flick some pain. And I'm like, the Lord began, he, t- he, gave me, he gave me more of it. He said, son, tell them to lift up the gates. Oh, lift up, he said, tell them to, he said, lift up your heads. Oh, your gates. Even lift up, even lift them up. Yea, everlasting doors. And let the king, everybody say king. King, that's a ruler. When you let him come in, guess what? You got to sit down. See, when you let him in, you sit down. The king of glory come in. He shall come in. He shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. The Lord. Who is the Lord? That, the ruler. Amen? The ruler. The ruler of hosts. Let the ruler of hosts come in. Amen? He is the king of glory. Guard, guard, guard yourself from words and seeds that can be planted and create ideals that are not lined up with the word of God. This is the deception and deceit of wickedness today. Where words come out of men's wives and men who say they are pastors or prophets or even come out of their mouth and words that don't line up with the word of God to take you and you conceive that word. And like God told me, he showed me, he said, to conceive something, he says, first you got to desire it. And then your desire, he said, after you desire something, then there's a conception of it. There's a, a birth of that. Then there is sin and then there is death. Because that conception of that seed, it's like when that seed gets conceived inside of you, it's going to begin to birth something in you. You will have a hatred and a resentment and a dislike from someone you don't even know it because somebody dropped a word in your ear. Because someone dropped a word in your ear, and now your heart is hardened toward that person. You don't even know why. And it brings division and separation. It's like that bee. It's like that bee in your ear. Bringing excruciating pain. Amen. Look at someone say, guard, guard yourself. Guard yourself. And when you sit down, when you get saved, no, I pray, watch what, watch what the word says. He says, as a babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word of God, that they may grow thereby. As a babe desire milk, God says, I want you to desire the word that you may grow thereby. Your growth is according to the word. Amen. That you may grow thereby. The word. And you know what's funny? A lot of time when you're reading the word according to the Revelation 19, prophecy is rolling out your mouth already. About what God is planning, what God is, what God is planning on, and what God desires, what He wants, what He planning, what He wants. He said, "Fight the good fight of faith. Fight with the word. Guard. Let the King of Glory come in. The Lord of Hosts." Let them come in with your eye, your eye gates, your ear gates, your mouth gates. Because when he in, he can lead you. He can guide you every day, all day. For the Bible said those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. The Spirit is the word of God leading you and guiding you. Knowing that there's a girl over there about to commit suicide and lead you right over there to give her the right word to, to bring her out of that darkness. Knowing a young man over there is about to lead you right over there. You don't have the time. Let's say, have the time the word leading your God and you moving and speaking through it. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. It's all in the Bible. They didn't. King, the, 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 the high priest didn't even know he was prophesying. 
Because what he was saying, what he wanted was, he, what he came out of his mouth was, he was saying better for him to die. But one, he don't know what he's saying. Because his interpretation wasn't what, it wasn't spiritually, it wouldn't be, but, it, but it was spiritually. When God said, go over here, I didn't know it was a woman over there committing suicide. I just went over there with God said. Why? Because it's God. Just obey him. Obey the word and the reward comes. Watch this. Obey the word and the reward comes with the obedience to the word. The obedience, the reward is connected to your obedience to the word. God speaks a word. You obey it. The reward is connected to that. It ain't connected to you. It's, it's, on, it's connected to your obedience to what God said. You might not even understand it. God says, today I want you to stay home. Your obedience to stay home saved you from, so you might not even know what it was. But you just know God knows what best. So I'm just going to obey him. Amen. There are times where God will reveal. There are some times that God will reveal in part. And some of us, if we revealed it to you all at one time, you would take it and mess it up. God knows where you and I are spiritually. He knows how much to give you and how to lead you to a place of understanding the fullness of what he said. You know what I learned walking with God? I learned the rest. If he give you one piece, I just learned the rest. He got it. When he ready to give you the next piece, ready. when he ready to manifest it, why? Because I learned in the word that God don't share his glory with nobody. You can't try to use God to glorify yourself because you will play yourself. Why? You will not be able to carry the weight in which you, the arena that you're trying to take yourself in. You won't be able to carry that weight. You won't. And the only way you carry it when God do it, because he prepared you to carry it. He prepared you to carry it. I see men of God, I see men of God in the Bible like Gillian. You know, they didn't, were nowhere near prepared to carry that weight. And God had to bring them to, the, to carry that weight. Didn't even see themselves as in what God was required, what, what the word required them to be. So how can you take any glory for something you didn't even see yourself doing that? That's why our praise be pure because we know it's all about him. Our worship be pure because we know it's all about him. Amen. God wanted, I don't know. God wants to say, man, I'm going to tell you, y'all, watch out for them bees. Watch out for them bees. Watch out for them bees because when they get in your ear, it'll change your whole demeanor. It'll change your whole function. Watch out for them words that come to sting about somebody, about a person, or a situation. Watch them. For the Bible says to owe no man anything but to what? Love him. The same Bible says speak ill of what? No man. And the same Bible says if you haven't all go to your what? Brother. You got it covered on every corner. Um, as you were talking, it just reminded me of um, Abraham and Isaac. And he, the first thing is that he got a word to sacrifice his son. He didn't know what he was going to do, but he was moving forward. And then from there, once he got to the mountaintop to kill his son, he also had to be open to have a relationship with God to hear that he said, wait, stop, because some of us, we would have just kept going, but without hearing God when he said stop. And then the second side to the story of the word that when God speaks the word and he wants us to, to speak that word is with Abraham, when he said, hey, speak into the rock, but then he struck the rock. And when he struck the rock, that disobedience had him not walk into the promised land. So. There's also, you know, there's also a consequence to both sides of the reward side of it and then also the um, consequence of the not walking into the obedience of God. Amen. Amen. 
let me uh, let me explain to us and where God dropped my spirit even as he was speaking. Moses, the obedience of the word reveals glory to God. When we don't obey the word the way it's, it's supposed to, you cause God to look a certain way before people. That's everybody. You can cause God to look a certain way before your wife because you did not line up with the word. You can cause God to look a certain way before your husband because you did not line up with the word. You can cause God to look a certain way before the, your enemies because you did not line up the word. And God is so serious about us not bringing his name as a reproach among the unsaved that he says, I want you to hear my son. This is my son. Hear him. And I love what Greg said because in both situations, you can run off with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you did get the word to go take he got the word to go take his son up there so you can like okay that's what i'm gonna do boom boom you can be hardcore on doing something and that you're not open for god now to alter that in what you are doing see though he got the word to go there somebody god may have gave you a word to do this for a season but now he's telling you to stop and do something else amen and yet because and you are still fighting with yeah he did tell you to do that, but it ain't but you still fighting with that because could you imagine that like Greg said God if he if he had not been sensitive to God he would have stabbed their son and it, and, and, he, and at that point he would have been moving in disobedience. But yet God told him to that point, and God didn't tell him how many of you know God did not tell him that there was going to be a ram in the bush, he didn't tell him that. For all those who think God tell your man everything. God tell me, yeah, right. You're the only one. Because when I look through the scripture, you're the only one he tell everything. He took up, he took up. No, he took him up there. He said, don't, don't do it. Moses hit the rock. Guess what? And this will mess us, this will mess us up. The water still came. So you think somebody good with God because you still because you still saw God move and God be like, I did that for the people, but I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to deal with you. Because why? Now the people see me as an angry God. Remember this, the words that you receive produce the actions that you do. The words that you receive produces the actions. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. The word, what's in my heart? The hidden word. Your words reveal your actions. All you got to do is examine your actions and you will see who leading you. That's why the scripture says that a good tree can only bear good fruit. Your word produces your act. You sit there, you got envy and anger and jealousy he said he told he, he told him in corinthians you know what he told me let me say this he told him in corinthians he said you know what there's envy strife and malice in you he said you flesh you carnal you carnal so god is telling his church hear me he is telling his church i'm trying to i'm, I'm giving you my word if it seemed like, y'all know what? It seemed like it's an attack on the word for entertainment. Forget the word. Let's entertain for three or four hours. Let's entertain. And have no people. You know what's so funny about the church? People don't know no word. You ask them, let me, let me, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you this is so funny. God had me, I was watching, Vicky, I was watching you. Um, you were interviewing people, right? God says, listen, watch how many of them don't have a clue to the questions that she asks in. I mean, then some of them like didn't have a clue. Could and if that don't scare you, that someone randomly going around and they're going around in a, in a, in, a, in a mall and asking people, and these people really want to win because she's trying to give them fifty dollars if you ask the question, and she asking them questions. And they have no clue what the word is. Mm. 
no clue. You know why that's dangerous? When Satan attacked Jesus, he ain't break out in a dance. He ain't break out with all that. He said when Satan, when the king, when, 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 when the so-called king, Satan himself, self-declared self king, but the head demon, the head, because that's all, they, all demons are fallen angels. The head demon of all demons, the angel, he is number, they number four, came and attacked the king of kings and lord of lords. He said, it is written. He whooped Satan up, cast him out, whooped him up and cast him back by having the word. By having the word. By having the word of God. You gotta say, Lord, give me a hunger, give me an understanding of your word. Because Satan's attack is to distort the word. To handle it deceitfully. To turn it into doctrines of demons. To try to get to manipulate it by adding a little something to it. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't. I don't like, man, I don't like, y'all church, this church board, that church, why, because why, why, they, why, because they don't fill it with entertainment. I never forget, God, God will be teaching you all along what he's teaching you. I was at, I was at his middle school, and the kids in the auditorium was acting up. And what was funny is that, when there was a program in there, and the program was having something fun to do, and the kids was all, all like they had the intention, they had their full attention while something fun was going on, right? But when it came to the teaching part, they started like, and I remember way back, this happened, this happened about some years ago. I remember God said to me, see, the Lord showed me, say, see, they're not interested in just learning, they're not interested in just sitting down learning of me. Learning something, it's got to be some type of trickery and gimmick in it for people to see. But see, you want to know God's presence. In the spirit, his word is spirit, reveals God being present. The Holy Spirit is to bring all things into remembrance of the word, not himself, of the word. My sheep know my and another they shall not follow. They know the word. Why? Wow, they've been discipled. They've been discipled. We know him as Jesus. Amen. We know him as Christ. Amen. We know him as Lord. Amen. But how many times in the Bible that you hear them call him rabbi? Meaning teacher. Master teacher. Rabbi, one who teaches. Well, it makes sense since he's the word and, he and the father said, hear him. It makes sense that he would want him, that he be the teacher and we be the students. And we say, that's more. Teaching? Pastor teacher? Let's look at it for a minute. Read verse 1. I know you read it before, but read it again. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doeth so easily beset us, 
And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The witnesses ought to encourage you to keep on pushing. If God, this is what we, this is what we should be saying. This is, what you, this is what you and I should be saying. If God did it for Moses, amen? If God, if Moses' word came to pass, if God did it for Israel, the evidence that God did it for Israel, you want to know where your faith is? Just look at Israel. Look at Jerusalem. That's, that, that's, that's what God said he was going to do. He gave the 12. Israel is simply the 12 tribes, 12 tribes that were birthed out of Jacob, uh, Jacob who became Israel, the 12 tribes. That's Israel. The evidence, God real, that's real. Israel is real. There's 12 tribes in Israel. We talk, this, that's real. Jacob real. That means Isaac got to be real. And if Isaac real, that means Abraham got to be real. Hmm. And God's promise to Abraham. Amen. See, historical, this stuff reveals it is real. In the word. Historically reveals. So you got, you know, God want to build your faith up. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. He says, let, what's, I like this part, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. That sin, that's that desire. Lay it aside. Trust what God has said to you. Trust what God is saying to you. Don't let your desires pull you away from God. Don't let the weight of life pull you from what God, because what? Oh, sin. Those are the two things. Those two things, sin and connected to your desire and that weight of life, it'll pull you away from what God said. It, it, some, because it's going to be some weight. It's, it's, it's going to be some weight. Ask Moses, is it weight? Amen? Ask the, ask the apostles, was it weight? Oh, I think it's weight when they're going to they cut you in half or throw you in half. I think it's weight. When you stand on truth and it may cost you your very life. It's weight when all your homegirls and all, all your homeboys be like deuces. I ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't turn to that Christian thing. Oh, that's some weight. But he said, lay it aside. Because you've been quiet. Because you're compared with a, such a great cloud of witnesses that God is faithful about what he said. That God's word is so faithful that they all let aside knowing that what, what, the race that you are running, what God is calling you to do, it's going to come to pass. Amen? Go ahead. Verse 2. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look to who? Jesus, the author. So when you feel that weight and you're going through some sin, who you need to look to? Jesus. Jesus. No, look, look, no, look to your bay. No, Jesus. Look, look, look to your, look to your money. He said, no, you, you, you say you want to, you, you, you want to walk in faith. Look to the one, look to the one who started your faith. Look to the one who was the author. Look to the one, well, I says, he didn't even say look to your pastor. Because if you have a true pastor, he leading you to the word. Why? So you can fast and pray for yourself. He's leading you to a relationship with God for yourself. Uh, well, you don't have to call me to pray for you. You don't need a you don't need a prophetic word for me. Why? You got a, you got a direct connection from God yourself. God will talk to you Himself. Amen. A true, a, a true man of God is going to lead you to the one who said the same power I have, He'll give to you. A true man of God is not going to have you codependent on Him. Need to speak over your life. You can speak over your own life. The Word of God. So when a man of God comes speaking over your life, all he's doing is confirming what God already let you know. That way you don't become codependent or start, put, what, or start exalting him or her in a position they have no business being in. Good evening. 
I just um, wanted to catch a little bit up on verse one at the end uh, where it says uh, either uh, depending on what version it says to um, let us run with patience uh, in the King. I think it's the King James, right. uh, but in it, uh, which is actually what I found more encouraging. But in the uh, other versions, it, most of the time it says endurance. And for me, even reading that it's 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 the 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 patience part of it is like you you're going through all these struggles you're learning you're growing but you many times because you do make mistakes you you're like oh my god i'm never going to get to where i need to be you know we're kind of hard on ourselves but it says to have patience because um because for the race that's set before us so we got to have patience with ourselves as well and i just thought that was encouraging right and and have patience that God can fulfill that which he has established. That's all what verse 11 telling you before he goes into 12. I'm running after God, right? I got the word. I know what he has promised. He has promised for me to be with him for eternity. Amen? I know that what he has promised. But why, he, why, I, why I'm, I'm being persecuted to, rank, to ride with him? You know what I'm saying? I'm being, I'm being despised and rejected because I stand on him. Y'all got to see how this works out. I'm being despised and rejected because I'm standing on his word. And, and I'm being rejected. I mean, I feel like, a, like you know, you could feel like, a, like a, a rag up on the earth, like a, piece, like a piece of nothing because you're not conforming to what everybody else is doing. And everybody looks like they're having fun and they're having money and they're having this and they that and this and that. But, I look, but the apostles, they were like dirt. They were like rags. They were mistreated. Why? Because they believed the word of God. And they believed, like, like Moses, he believed instead of what? Succumbing to Egypt, he believed the reward that came from God. See, if your reward is something down here, then once you obtain it, you're done. If your biggest reward is about something down here, so even what, even what God may declare, because I said, even if he raised you up, it's still to finish what he is doing for the purpose of what he's actually doing of his coming back, for that soul to be saved. There is nothing more important that God can give you than salvation, what God wants to give people, salvation, to save their soul. That word says to be saved, to be sanctified, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be connected to God, because the Bible says that life is full of trouble, and no matter if you get in God, if you get a mansion, you're going to still have trouble. If you get a, if you get a Bentley, you're still going to have trouble. If you get the wife you want, you're still going to have trouble because this world is full of trouble and God is not a man shall lie. But my soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. And the promise in which he has given me is greater than the trouble that I can confront me. The trouble that's why. So I'll keep my eyes running the race for him. Amen. I'm going to run the race for him. Keep why? Because I know at the end. I'm because see why you here? You're going to get things added. Things will be added and taken from you. Amen? You can be a, a millionaire today and be poor tomorrow. And yet, if you're still anchored, you're good. Because your identity is not in the stuff that can be taken or you're going to be moved. It's in Christ and Christ alone. So therefore, if I get a if I get a wife, I'm good. I thank God. If you get a husband, that's beautiful. Amen. That's beautiful. But what if an accident come? I know a man of God who got married and oh well, he, he lost his wife. But the way he spoke, he didn't lose his faith. That don't mean he didn't feel the sorrow. Doesn't mean he didn't feel the pain. But the pain and sorrow did not outweigh the word he was standing on. Doesn't mean that tears are not going to come. It's just the bottom line here. But we seem like in America, in America, we giving away God for car. We giving away God for stuff. And this gospel is not the gospel. You know, I'm gonna tell you how you know America gospel is false. I'm gonna tell you how you know that this gospel is really fake and false. Because you can't preach it in another country. You can't preach this gospel, this prosperity. You can't go through a third world country and preach this gospel.
you have to preach Christ. And you have to offer them something greater than that. And that's why in other countries, in China, they're willing to die. What is it that they, what is it about the gospel they get that they sneak? And I remember this guy told me in Germany, in Germany, they, they had this underground church. Knowing if you get caught, you're going, you're going to go to prison. You're going to get, what is it about their gospel that's different from the gospel here? That's how you know it's fake. Because something that they received had to be something like the apostles. Because the apostles, they died. For. They were willing to sacrifice everything for that gospel. The gospel we got, we just want to use it to see what we can get. And how God going to lift us up and how we can get fame and notoriety and, and all that. It ain't even in the Bible. And they twist scriptures. They twist scriptures to fit into their own desires. No. Because God is so good. You know why God is so good? You becoming rich was never predicated on you serving him. You becoming rich was never predicated on you even call, even you believing in him. Your gift, your talent was never predicated on you even accepting him. That's why in America, we have a bunch of people who are millionaires, who are atheists and wicked and wretched and ungodly. But they got talents and gifts. See, I know what I'm preaching is the truth because I know who gave it to me. It's in the word. It's foundational. It's in Christ. It's in Christ. God will add, he's so good, he'll add this to you. He'll add that, that. But you won't live for that. Because you know what he'll do? Let me tell you how good, you know how good God is? He'll add all that to you, right? He'll say this. Then he'll put you in a situation. Because you, even while he's acting it to you, you're in a fallen world, right? And then he'll go have them whisper in the ear of King Nebuchadnezzar and say, build a statue. Because now they sitting pretty. You sitting pretty. You know, you, you got your God, you sitting pretty, you, 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 you part of the court, you good. Tell them to build a statue. Now watch this. He said, see, Everybody look equal now. Everybody, see, you, you got to see the season. You got to see the time we in. Everybody's sitting down now. So you can't really, so somebody's, some saying Jesus and some not saying Jesus. He said, tell America to build a statue. You're going to build two statues. A man and a man. Or a woman and a woman. And we're going to build this statue. And then we're going to sign and have the king sign on it that they can be married. And then tell everybody who don't bow down to it that they're going into the furnace. So now, when everybody's sitting down, stand up for a minute, Jasmine. Stand up for a minute. Those who stand, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying now. Those who stand up become more obvious. But to stand up, there's a price with it now. There's a price that you might lose everything. Everything this gospel said you should be seeking God to get, now you might lose it in this price. You might lose it like they do in, chi in China, like they do in Russia. Where you got Christians sitting in prison for, for doing nothing but believing in Jesus Christ. Like what was that nation? Iraq, where they beheaded those men? Egypt. Now that had never happened in America. You want to bet? The stage already been set. And them lying prophets who talk about it's about to get better. They lying. It's about to get real wicked and dark. Why? Because that's what the scriptures say. 
He said, when they say what? Because how you going to prophesy that when the Bible says in the last days there will be what? Perilous times. That's what the Bible say. So who are you to prophesy something different? Because if you prophesy the truth, you'll prepare the people to be dressed for what is coming. So now it's obvious like, oh, he willing to pray. He willing to hear. Watch, watch this. Because come on, y'all. Y'all know. It's easy to say you believe something into what you believe is tested. Everybody believe until you test it. Everybody a Christian. Isn't that what we are? Isn't that time we are? Everybody a Christian. Dude sitting there, blind in his hand. Female, they, they, on face, they, on, they on Facebook. They're everybody a Christian. Until that fire comes. And then you, it'll be just those who remain standing. But then they're going to have to go through something. Because there's a separation between the tares and the wheats. There shall surely be a separation between the tares and the wheats. Those who are with God and those who are not. So we got to run that race. Amen. Know what, know what you're running for. Know what, know, listen, hear this for the Lord. Know what the real prize is. Know what the real prize is. The real prize is to dwell with God for eternity. That's the real prize. That's what the apostles taught. That's what they believe. It was to run, to be with God for eternity. And it ain't changed. The gospel ain't changed. The priesthood, it ain't changed. And God may, a lot of things may be added to you down here, but they'll come and go. They'll come and go. God may send you to one job and the job paying you $70,000 a year. And then it's time for you to give it up. It's time for you to sacrifice it for something else. I watched this this lady on, um, well, I don't know, one of the, one of the shows, she was a um, assistant principal. God told her, time up, cut it loose. You won't be doing that no more. She said when she said she knew, she said, God, make it so plain to me what you want. That she said, God, be rough with me. Just make it plain. She said when she was, and she was on the plane. She said, he said, turn, he said, she said it was so rough. All he heard, she said, she, she heard him say, turn in your resignation now. She said she typed it up and sent it by email then. See, don't think God, people say, will God test you? He will try, you know, come on, word test. Why? Manifestation of truth. One who says they know the truth. Test. He's, I didn't say it. Didn't, didn't the scripture say, think it not strange when what? That word trial is interpreted as test. I'm going to see if you have the faith. Not to your demise, but to your growth. Any, anybody been tested and found out you ain't had the faith you thought you had? Yeah. And those who say no, they lying. Or they, they lying, they so deceived, they failed it. Because why? Everybody's going to be tried. And for you to say you, for you say you haven't, that means you say you are. That means you are perfected. Even Paul didn't say that. And he wrote <laughs> over the Bible. Listen, I can have a seat. Listen, God desired none to be lost. But this ain't play. This ain't play. Play time. Faith come by what? Hearing what? It's a lot of people speaking. Do you know the word of God? Read some more. Twelve verse. 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right throne of God. Look who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Look who had look who has the right to establish your faith from where it starts to end. The one that did, read, read, what he did again? Who for the joy that was set before him. Somebody got to catch that. For the what? Joy. He did what? Endured the cross. He's enduring the cross, but there's some joy set be what? Before him. Somebody said what the joy is. That he's been saved. Yeah. Back to him. Let me tell you one thing I learned. He never had his mind on where he was going. He had his mind on the finish line. Therefore, it gave him the ability to endure where he was going. I found out that word. I read that scripture when I was going through. Boy, when I first got saved, God led me to that scripture. And I remember, I, I, I remember oh, let me tell you. When I got saved, I mean, I'm going through the courts, all this going on. Going to, and, and I begin in my mind, think about, you know what? I'm going to get married one day. I started taking my mind out of that and started thinking about what God began to tell me. See, Jesus knew the joy. In other words, you can go through this world when you know what's before you. That's why you can't have something before you that's temporal. Because if you do, it'll cost you. You will give it up. But see, the reward that you and I have received is so great. It is to dwell with God for eternity. It is to walk into heaven and hear God say to you, job well done, my faithful servant. Amen? My faithful servant. My faithful servant. One who has fulfilled what I have told him to do. My faithful servant. One who has received what I have said. He said, that reward. And he said, if you really have the right picture in front of you, you can have joy through anything you're walking through in this earth. What? If Jesus can have, he said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I need you to study the cross to understand what he endured. In other words, so that means why he was being spit on, why he was being nailed, why, what's this, why you are being persecuted, why people are slandering you, why people are talking about you, why people are leaving you, why people are rejecting you. The Bible says, have your joy. Run that good race. Have your joy on the finish line. See yourself in the presence. See yourself with eternal life. You know what? You should see it. We talking about, you know, people like name it, claim it. You got to be able to manifest. Let me tell you, let me give it all that garbage and that witchcraft and new age for you out the way. Let me tell you what you need to manifest. What you need to imagine is the finish line and being with God. You need to imagine what he said and you need to imagine yourself being before God and you need to imagine him saying, Job well done, my faithful servant. You need to imagine that your name is written in the Lamb. And if you can imagine something that great, you can overcome anything down here. You can conquer anything down here with the joy. No matter what the devil come at with you, if he saw in your neck in half, if they run you through with a sword, if they dip you in tar, if they crucify you upside down, they wonder, what is this joy? Why do you have joy when they're crucifying you? Why do you have joy when they nail you upside down? Why do you have joy? Why, what's wrong with you? My, you? my vision, my vision, my vision is so much bigger than you can imagine. My vision is not down here. My vision is not no vision board trying to get this in. My vision is being with God one day and having eternal life where there is no more sickness, where there is no more tears, where there is no more pain where tomorrow is full of joy that's my vision and with that vision I can have joy while I'm down here even through the roughest situation if I'm married I got joy well I got a bigger vision than that if I if I'm broke I'm all right I got a bigger vision than that if I'm rich if I got cancer I got a bigger my vision is to dwell with God that was the promise of God that garbage they start talking to you promise you God gonna get prophesy he gonna give you this he gonna give you millions of dollars. None of that is bigger than that stuff. Ain't gonna stop nobody pain. If I gave you a million dollars and you had cancer, you still got cancer. If I gave you a mansion with all a Bentley 
and you're crazy, you're still crazy. But see, Jesus said, for the joy, I love, uh, for the joy, to see the joy. Watch this, you got to get this. Satan took Jesus to the top and said, look at the nations. I'll give you all this. Jesus said, this boy a joke. He don't understand all this. How can that compare to being on the right hand side of God? Come on. How can, what can you give me that can compare to me having eternal life? Dwelling with a God. The Bible, watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, don't get rid of the full of the power of light. Cut them off. Because why? Because in the new Jerusalem, <laughs> you ain't going to need no electric bill. Because God himself will be the light of the city. The glory of God will light up the city. The, the Bible said, there is no sickness. And they trying to sell you a fantasy down here. They trying to get you all mingled up down here. This ain't your home. You only here to be a light to the, you are here to bring people to the true home that you are called to walk in. Because everything down here is temporal. So why sell your soul for something you can't take with you? You worked all your life to get to become a billionaire and you died so people can split it up and fight for it. He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. God says, you want to be able to endure? Then you got to have my vision. If you want to be able to do it in a world that's wicked and perverted and where people will do you wrong, people will dog you out, people will, in a world full of, he said, you got to have a vision bigger than down here. You got to understand what you believe in is so much more worth than what they can offer you down here. And then God says, I'll add stuff to you, but nothing I add to you will be greater than me being in you. Read it. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. He, lest I hear what he said. He endured such contradiction of sinners against They came against, they came against him. They call him the devil. Some of us, if somebody just look at you wrong, you're ready to fight. <laughs> they look at you wrong, you're ready to fight. They say one thing to you like, oh, well, it's over. They call God himself in the flesh. They call him the devil. They say he must be visible, the devil. They call him a liar. They spit in his face. But the Bible says there was some joy set before him that was worth all that. Go ahead. Lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Listen, now, now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I've been, you, you have this kind of warfare where in your mind because you're going through so much, you just feel like you can't make it. In your mind, you're going through so much. You might have lost your job. People coming at you. It's just crazy. Anybody ever been there? It just seemed crazy. The Bible says, when you find your mind going through that, think about Jesus. Because you ain't going nothing. You, you and I are going through nothing compared to what he went through. And guess what? Many things that you and I go through came from decisions we made. We sitting there hating on baby daddy. We sitting there hating on baby mama. We sitting there hating on this dude and hating that woman. And you angry for indulging in sin in the first place. You should be glad, and so should I, that God didn't kill you when you was in that sin and where you had no, where you disregarded and used your body, used your body to defile. Oh, 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 oh
I, oh, can I just talk about me? So I'm so grateful that God had mercy on me. So I can't take no righteous role with God. I really can't because I was sinning against him, sinning against nobody. So we mad because people do us dirty. But you ain't, you ain't grateful for God didn't get you for doing him dirty? And then you want God to bless you in something or a situation that if he had blessed you in, he would have been signing a ticket for you to go to hell. Somebody told me, let me tell you, this. somebody told me they had this prayer line, right? And this false prophet was in this prayer line. And he was telling, just prophesying everybody, everything in the kitchen sink. And this false prophet, and the girl got in the prayer line and said the prophet was prophesying cars. He had a car line. And the girl got in the car, one of the young ladies got in a car line and said, when he got to her, he said, well, I'm not in this line for me. I'm in this line for my boyfriend. So I said, that's interesting. Because God going to prophesy you a car for your boyfriend for a relationship that he don't even acknowledge. So God going to sign off on this man of God prophesying you a car for your boyfriend in a relationship that he does not acknowledge, neither does he like or does he sort of sanction. There is no covenant. There is nothing. So if God does give her the car, he is condoning a behavior that's even contrary to his word. Because the Bible says a wife body belongs to her husband and a husband body belongs to his wife. He never said your body belongs to anybody other than your husband or your wife. The scripture says, let me help you out. When you get married, the scripture says that your body, my, as of my wife, my body belongs to my wife. That's my lips, hands, everything. He says, my wife body belongs to me. And he says, the only time I should deprive my wife of my body or vice versa is in the time of fasting. But as soon as I finish the fast, I must give her what she wants. Why? Because I've opened the door to an appetite that if I don't give it to her, I can lead her to, or she can lead me into temptation. That's scripture. So your boyfriend body don't belong to you. You're sleeping with somebody else's husband. And your girlfriend body don't belong to you. You're sleeping with somebody else's wife. That's called adultery. But in that case, it would be fornication because one of y'all not married. So why would God? See, once you know scripture, you'll, you'll, you'll debunk that real quick. It ain't nothing you can say in that situation to God. Why? Because God don't move outside of his word. Well, God, maybe God going to do it. Maybe God will do it so it can show, him, show her God. So now God does evil to do good? No. There is no shadow of turning in God. God is love. And he wants his children to be loved and to operate in love. God is not the God that wants to see people used and hurt and broken. Amen. So he said, run the race. He said, run the race. But for the joy that's set before you, there's some joy. God says, I got, he said, I got, I'm, he said, I am the author. In the, he said, I wrote your life, girl. Well, I wrote your life. He said, I'm writing your life. Come on, you got God. He, watch this. The one that's writing. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what he said. Let me tell you what he said. The one that's writing your life. He says, my thoughts of you are never evil. So the one that's writing your life, he said, my thoughts toward you are never evil. But watch what he says. He said, but to give you hope and a future. That's the author and the finisher of your life. I would want to be on that pathway. If his thoughts are not evil, then he's leading to me something to good. Amen? And if I'm on the pathway that he wants me, not only is he leading me to something good, he has a future for me that, that, my God, he has a future for me that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things God prepared for the hearts of those who love him. But he said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. God said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. Why? Because what I say has your interest involved. I know the holes. I know the stumbling blocks. He said, I'm the light that go before you. I'll be a light to you. I know what that dude feel like. I know what he thinking about. That they will destroy you, hurt you, and trash you. Why? Because they're too immature to deal with something so precious. 
See, a soul to God is the most valuable thing. And God came from God came from heaven to earth for a soul. A soul, a soul is the the breath that you breathe, a life. God, a soul is so valuable to God that He came up and gave His own life for it. You could not be purchased with silver and gold. God said, "Silver and gold, you are so much." How many of our daughters? How many of our sons? You sell yourself for silver and gold and money. And God says, "You are so much more valuable than that. You are so valuable that I'll come down, God Himself, and I'll take a body and I'll shed my own blood to save you, to show you what love really looked like, to show you what love really looked like." And I'll heal your broken places from the places where you got hurt because you didn't understand what love was. And I'm going to give you a better vision. A vision that could cause you to be able to deal with the trouble and the hurt that's in the world. I'm going I'm to give you, <laughs> I'm going to give you my son. And he says, watch me, he said he was despised. He said, my son that... My son, he said, look at him from which come you here. It's going to be a, come on, I was, I, it was a struggle for me. It was a struggle for me to let go some things. It was a struggle for you, probably? It was a struggle. I mean, I ain't want to, I had a, man, I had a baby mama. When I got saved, yes, I did. I was like, I don't want no more babies from nobody. I just want to, I want to marry her right there. And one God told me, that ain't the one. I said, God, no, you wrong. I'm going to marry this one right here because I ain't having no baby from nobody else. I'm just going to be with her. And he came to me three times. Say, he came to me two times. That's not the one. And then he told me, I ain't choose that. Let me tell you something. God is not obligated to choose what you choose. Don't let people lie to you. God is not. Why? Because when you chose it, you were not in a position to what? You were not in a position to understand what you were choosing. He came to me three times. And I'll never forget the day she was driving down the street. And I knew. And my son was in the car. And I'm seeing and, and tears in my eyes, I'm like, I was like, I love you, son, but that's not the destiny I chose for you. So he, and then, boy, I'm going to tell you, you know how he did it, too? He did it real. He, he did it so, I, he, he did it so I won't have no misunderstanding. He took, I'm laying in my mom, I came to my mom, I laid across the bed. It was, it had to be like, Easter said something like this, when I laid across the bed, it was the story of Abraham. And I'm, I'm laying and it was right around the time where he was putting Hagar out. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on, Lord. No, don't do that. He said, when he said he put Hagar out because Abraham birthed Ishmael out of the flesh. What you do out of your flesh, God is not obligated to bless it. Because especially if it will interfere with his plans for you. If it will interfere with your destiny, if it will interfere with what God has destined, destined for your life, he will remove it. And you don't even realize he's removing it for something better. He's removing it. There's something that's lined up. Because remember, his thoughts towards you are not evil to give you hope in the future. If that thing will block the future that God has established for you, he's going to remove it. And a good father, don't, if you cry and hurt, he's going to grab you in his arms and say, cry, baby. But I still ain't giving you what you want. Because it'll kill you. You know, if you're a mama or dad, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes with your children, it hurt telling them no. Because they, especially when they're little, they eyes like, Mommy, I really want that candy. But you know it's not good for them. So you let them cry on your leg. And while they, when they go and they get to work, when they get to work, doing all that, you say, you still ain't getting it. Why? Because I know it's not good for you. I know it will mess you up. I know it will derail your life. I know it will mess you up. I know it will crush you. And I have a better plan for you. So I have to shift you and get you back on the bigger vision. Why? And why do I need the bigger vision? Because now I need to have something to look forward to to get me past this hurt and pain and frustration I'm going through. So I turn to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. I turn to Jesus, who endured the cross with joy, who endured, watch this, people slandering him spitting on him and yet he had his faith would not turn detour him from doing what god called him to do the bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered so the more he suffered the more he revealed i'm gonna obey god why because what god is offering is so much better 
That's why false gospel is trying to convince you that this is so much better. No, it isn't. How can this, how can that which is created be better than that who created it? No, it'll never be better. Matter of fact, the best that we have down here in years will swindle to, will swindle to dirt. Read a little bit more, and we're going to go home. Because <laughs> we ain't going to finish this tonight either. We gonna, are we getting something out of this? Hebrews 12, verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, uh -oh. striving against sin. Uh-oh, he got us. See, I'm going to tell you, he, you, the writer of this, they don't even know who the writer of Hebrew <laughs> is. But he go hardcore right here. He really do. He kind of like... He, he kind of like set us up. He like, hold up. Stop acting like you don't resist, like you don't shed some blood for something. Mm. See, you know, we, we pampered here. I know we pampered. Come on. This America. Come on. This America. It's, we, we pampered down here. We pampered down here. We, we, we pampered down here. That's why when the AC not working, we lose our mind. Come on, y'all know. AC not working, we like, mind me lose your mind on. You, 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 your car break down, you feel like it's, your world is over, you know. We, we just, come on, you know how it is. I didn't get the, that, I, what's wrong with you? I did, they, they sold out the last pair of shoes, the, the red bottom, they gone. I saved all my, and now you said you three days to press. In the house, you can't eat but some shoes. That you was gonna pay seven hundred dollars for in your light bill late. So thank God you ain't pay for the shoes tonight to keep your lights on. And you ain't gotta sleep with Tommy. Down here, guys, he said, "We ain't shit." Father, when God, when he, when he, when he, when he, he tried me like that one time, he was like, "Well, why you act like you going through something? You ain't shed no blood for this." I'm like, "Yeah." But I did stand, you know what I'm saying? Which is trying to you say you ain't shed no blood. The average American ain't shed no blood for the gospel. Ain't nobody ripping your back open. Ain't nobody throwing you in prison for because you believe in Jesus. The worst they gonna do is what? Trash you out on Facebook or trash you out on um, TikTok. That's the worst they gonna do. Trash you out. Call y'all kind of names. Amen. Call you all kind of names. I didn't say it. Read it again. Read, read with the word. Y'all read it. What? Read, read it again. Read verse, the verse. Read, read the verse above it. Then read it. Verse three. For considering him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind, you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. You have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. God said, you were, we sin knock on our door, we been. Sin be like, we have one problem. Can we be real? Let's be real. We have one problem. Sin. He said, you have not resisted to bloodshed against sin. What, what is he saying? What are you he, he trying to say? He's saying, temptation came your way, and you sin instantly. You have not resisted against the sin like God, I would rather, before I sleep with another woman and do that, God, take me. I'd rather, I'd rather just lose everything I got before I hurt and cause someone else to perish. Jesus did all that. He said, I shed a blood. He bled out. Am I right, Paul? He bled out. You know what bleeding out mean? I mean, they beat him so bad to not just on the cross, on, on the way to the cross, on the way to the, he bleeding out. Why? Because they done took 39 tails and they put hooks on them, right? And they said, okay, you think you the son of God? You think you God? Wham! And when they ripped his, when they hit it back, it caught his back and they pulled it and ripped the skin off his back. Not one time. 39 times. They, whew, and they hook, rip the skin. Didn't know what they did? They put a hood over his head. And grown men said, prophesy who gonna hit you. 
and walk by men with him and bam and hit him. Then they ripped his beard out. So he said, next time you feel like you can't make it against sin, Next time you think you can't tell sin to step off and step down. Next time you think you can't tell sin, get out your face and leave you alone. Remember him. Next time you think you can't tell your little honey, we ain't doing that. Remember how they took nails this long. And they put it, this was considered a hand too. And they took the nail with a hammer and they nailed it through his flesh. And he feeling every bit of it. And then they take his other hand and they nail it to the cross. Then they take his feet and they put it on his heel like this. And they take a long nail and they nail it through. He says, next time you and I get weary in our mind and think we can't overcome sin. He said, just think about this and he'll give you the strength to do it. He'll give you the strength to do it. Because see that act, the cross was the greatest act of love that no man or woman can love you the way that, that, what, that way God did. Because when he did the nails, and when they ripped his back open, and when they punched, and then, okay, you know what they had the audacity to do? They took thorns. I don't even like stickers. You know, when they walk through some stickers, that thing, man, them things hurt. But they took thorns and wrapped it and pressed it down on his head and penetrated, and blood is running down his face. He said, next time you encounter, he said, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed yet. What is he trying to tell us? Through Christ, you can take out sin. You can take out your own desires. You can resist it by being willing to lose everything. How can I resist? God, I'll lose everything to, just to have you. Because why? The bigger picture, what you come, what you coming to give me is so much greater. Because let me tell y'all, one day that sky going to split open. And you're going to stand before, I watched this video, I don't know if you saw this video. I watched this video. This video messed me up because you can, you can feel it. Because I thought they were going to do it immediately. And on the video, they had like God standing behind this thing. And the lady came in. And you got it was so quiet in the video too. It was like, and the lady came in, he called her name and she came and he says, and the lady, he didn't do it quick, too. He slowly was looking for her name. And he says, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And she started rejoicing when she walked away. I'm thinking in my mind, that God, could you imagine that for real? He said, that's that rate. And then I'm thinking, you know, when they do it, you think they probably on the second one, they're going to be like, your name. And then the second one came, he said, let's say Johnson, he said, your name is written. On the Lamb, your name is written. Then it's like, oh, man, that's good. So I said, oh, this is what they finna get them up there. They finna, they finna. No, the third one came and said, and your name was written. You know what I got out of that? It's like they showing a lot of people where you get that security, the people going to make it. And then there was this last person that came. And they said to this person, your name is not in the Lamb's book. And the lady started going off to my, I was in church all, I was in church all the time. I did this and I did that. And no matter what she said, it did not change what he just read. Could you see what come out of God's mouth ain't going to be changed no matter how much you cry. No matter how much you weep, if it come out of his mouth and he say, your name is not written, you done. You can sit there for three to hours and cry. That's why. It's better for you to make up your mind now. It's better for you to say, God, I surrender and get back to, I want to know who Jesus is. You know, it's another thing I, I felt, I don't know this. Everything that Satan offers you, he just perverts 
everything that God want to give you. He perverts a boyfriend. He perverts a husband to being a boyfriend. He perverts a girlfriend from being a wife. He, per he perverts sex to being smashing and perverted. He perverts everything that's good and turned it into something nasty. Turned it into something filthy and unclean. And then he feeds it to us over and over and over again to where we start thinking that unclean is clean. And now it's hard for us to give up the unclean. But even if you think about it for a minute, the thing that you struggle to give up, if you really thought about what it gave you, you'd be like, I should have gave it. And what, no, what it cost you, you would have realized you should have gave it up a long time ago because it cost you too much. It cost you your self-respect. It cost you your family. It cost you your dignity. It cost you everything. He said, we going to stop there tonight. He said, for the blood. And I said, God, I'm talking to myself. Y'all just involved. Because you can go through a lot at work. You can go through a lot with your family. You know what I'm saying? You can go through a whole lot. And you start getting frustrated and aggravated. And then you want to take a side deal. Let me just go get a little, get this, or let me get a little of that. Let me try it. Let me go do a little of this. Let me go do something to try to escape. Let me go indulge in sin. But God says, I want to, I want to renew your mind. Because the only reason you go to sin, because that's all you know. You go to what you know. He says, I want to renew your mind. So I don't want you coming to church without your Bible no more. We ain't doing play play in church. We ain't turning my house into church. That's why we call this the classroom. Come with you. Come with your notebook, and you come into major in Christ. You come into major in Christ. Why? Because you want to be able to, for the joy that's set before you, and do everything this world throw at you. See, I found something out. What you won't confront, you can't overcome. And what you keep running and hiding from becomes your, becomes your coffin. But see, you can't overcome it. You know, I could, never, I could not overcome my own desires. My desires, even, even when my desires almost took me to a place of prison, I could not overcome my own desires. It took me surrendering to God to, to, to overcome lust and let God fill me with love. And when he filled me with love, then I found out what it meant to be with a woman and love her for real. Because like I told people, I said, when I met my wife, I never had sex with my wife until the day I said I do. Now, if you read my book, my book said I was hoish. Only, only, true, only an encounter with true love will cause you to honor your own body. I might even talk about honor my wife's body. I learned to honor my own body because until you honor your own body first, nobody will honor your body. People will treat you like you treat yourself. So you have to let God teach you how to love you. Stop trying to love people before you love you. And you can't love you until you love God. Because it's going to be God to teach you to love you. Let me give you scripture. Love God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know what the Bible say? Then he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. He said before you can love her, you got to love you. And how you love you is let him teach you. So the problem, God, is I never learned to love me. I never learned to love me. And then there's too many churches not teaching me to love me. They're teaching me to love what I do, how I act, how my gifts. My They're teaching me to love what I can do, and I still don't love me. So that's why I'm in the church still. I'm sleeping with him. I'm still doing Why? Because I never learned how to love me. Because once I learned how to love me, I knew how to sacrifice my flesh. I began to realize I'm so, you ladies, gentlemen, ladies and you are precious because you are so, you're not, this, it was a lie. It was a song that came out. It was, well, it was a lie. It says that you want in a million. That is a lie. You actually want to every human being that ever been born. There has never, ever, and there will ever, there will never, ever be another you. God don't make the same, even, but not exactly, exactly the same. They fingerprints. Why? Because he don't never want you to say, see, because God understands this. 
the rarer something is, the more valuable it is. Stop treating yourself as if you have no value. Stop putting yourself on the retail market. God says, and, and, and the problem is we're so busy trying to be like somebody. Else. You're trying to be like Beyonce or these people they put in front of you. Stop losing you to try to be like somebody else who ain't even happy with who they are. Don't let the makeup and the stuff fool you. Ask Will Smith, my wife, don't let it fool you. That's a whole lot behind that stuff that when you sell your soul into it. It's a whole lot of depth behind that stuff. So today, God, I ain't, I don't know about you, but I haven't resisted to bloodshed, right? So I need God to, to get me right. Amen? So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, if you're on YouTube, I mean, if you're on, a, if you're on um, Zoom, if you're on Facebook or wherever you might be, it's a night to examine you. It's a night to stop lying to yourself because I, I have to do it. I, when God say I ain't shedding no blood, he's saying, boy, that mean, come on, you know what God is saying? You know how God is, you know God, y'all might not want to hear it like this. God say, you soft. I believe God will say to America, America, you so soft. What we call hard is soft. Our gangster rappers, they soft as candy. Soft as cotton candy. That's why they got to pull out a gun. That's why they got to, they soft. They saw why. Because they don't know how to walk in love. It's easy to take the life of something. It's a whole other thing to honor and respect, even something that ain't honor and respect in you. See, we give respect to the wrong thing. Oh, he's tough because he got a gun. He got a blunt. He hitting this, he hitting that. No, he a child playing with toy things and shipwrecking and destroying people's lives while he playing. Because he ain't, why? We all been there. She a little girl trying to act like she a woman, sitting there flipping, letting them run up this way, that way. Got to go on a, on a forward, or all four, doing this and videotaping and doing all that. Because she a child. She immature and don't know her value. We all been there. But, but what the Bible said, when, when I was a child, I thought as a child. But he says in the, in, in the book, in Corinthians 13, he said, but now I become a man, I put away childish things. It's time to put away some childish things. And some of those childish things are attached to your desires and dreams and hope and begin to learn what your father wants for you. What does your father want for you? God, who loved you enough to come die for you. That ain't love. If it ain't, the altar's here. You got to come to God and say, God, you know what? I ain't shed no blood for you. I need you to help me get there. I need you to show me that joy. I need you to show me that big picture. Why? Because I'm tripping down here. Anybody find, come on. No, we, all, we always can tell when somebody else tripping. How about when you tripping? How you know Christians be tripping? When you tripping? When you tripping? When you can start realizing, I'm tripping. God, I'm so soft. Somebody, don't, somebody say something I don't like. I'm done with them. Somebody look at me the wrong way. I want to go fight them. I just got off a conversation a day ago, two days ago, talking about somebody behind their back because they did something. Like, Come on, you soft. We, we in America, we soft because we didn't get a hard, we didn't get the right gospel. Because let me tell you, the apostles, soft or hard. Straight, 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 straight soldiers from, I'm talking about soldiers you do not want to run into. Satan didn't want to. See, see, Satan, when you, when you harbor it, Satan don't even want to run in your direction. Because why? Because he exercised for you. He exercised, he exercised for you. He just, oh, God, you want to give me a workout, huh? He, God just said, time for you to get a workout. So he said, think it not strange when trials, I'm going to let you boom, boom. Why? Work out your faith, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. Work out with, what, this going wrong? My friend, I can't, this person just, he said, work it out. Work out the word. Work that word out. Declare it in the creed. Speak what God has given to you to speak. For I have called you for a time such as this, not tomorrow, because I'm calling you today. Say not tomorrow, for tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. I'm call he said, the day you hear the word of God, harden not your heart. He said, receive it and get up and claim it. Get up and claim it. 
I receive that word that God declared today. I want that seed to get inside me and begin to birth me to be the man and woman God to call me to be before the foundation of the world. If God is knocking on your heart today, then stand up. And the reason why we do that, I'm standing up. Because this word, I was like, God, mm. I was like, because when, when, when God take you through it, and you be like, what? And he be like, son, you got to harden up. They slander me, they going to slander you. If they can kiss me on the cheek and portray you, they can kiss you on your cheek too. Because, man, I went through something in my job. I'm like, you start going through some people that you love, you, you can, if you don't believe your heart got, your, you got to, man, let somebody cross you up or let somebody try you that you really care about. And watch how angry your heart get. And watch how big, look, and you'll be like, I want to, and your mind will be thinking about all kind of stuff about that person. And one time you cared about that person. One time you really, but now all you're thinking is bitterness and anger. And God says, see your flesh? But come to me. I'll give you rest. I didn't say you can't be mad. The Bible said be mad, right? But he said, sin not. What does sin mean? Don't let that thing fester inside you and turn you into something that you ain't called. To. Don't let, don't, oh, I feel you. I hear your Holy Spirit. Don't you ever give nobody that much power but God. Father, we thank you. As we stand before you today, God, you have shown us through this walk of faith that there are areas in our life, God, that we solve. And you are strengthening us, God, with your love. You're giving, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are strengthening our faith our stance. For you said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises the standard. You are strengthening our faith that we now have a standard against the enemy. We're going to stop talking about what we can't do. We're going to stop acting like we saw. We gonna, I know some of the hardest women and men, they got saved and turned so soft. When they was in the world, they'd be like fighting if somebody turned. Now they get saved, they act like they don't know. You got, you're going to still fight. You're just going to use different weapons. And I'm going to tell you something, and sometimes you're going to cry. That's okay. And sometimes you're going to be angry, amen, but you're going to get up and you're going to, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. What is he saying? Fight with the word I gave you. Fight with what, fight with what I say about you. What did I say about you? Did I say if I'm for you, who can be against you? Fight the good fight of faith. And anything that's coming against my, he said, anything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, capture it and bring it into the obedience of Christ Jesus. Being ready to revenge the disobedience with obedience. In other words, God, I'm going to do what you say. I don't care what it costs me. I'm going to stand on the word of God. If I lose everything, I just, I will not lose you. Because everything I lose but it's going to be lost anyway. You better get that revelation with God to say, everything I lose was going to be lost anyway because ain't nothing eternal but God. So, Father, we thank you. And, God, I ask you that you, you said when we come after you, you will heal the brokenhearted. God, I was wrong. God, I acted in a way that wasn't pleasing to you. God, I did things with my body, my mind, or my heart that I sinned against you. And today, God, I'm so grateful that your forgiveness is my portion. God, I'm so glad that your mercy endureth forever. God, I'm so grateful that you are long-suffering and you are kind and you are gentle. God, I, I thank you for forgiving me as I confess my sins openly as we all shall do before you. And God, you told me if I confess my sins one to another, 
if we confess our sins one to another, then healing will take place. Some of us, you're not healed because you are just looking at what somebody did to you, but you won't be honest about how you operated, so you're in bondage by their pain instead of being free from yours. God, I thank you that forgiveness is in this room by your word. And thank you, God, that you are telling us that we can look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, O gracious and glorious God, who, who endured sin, who endured the reproach of, of others, O gracious and glorious God, to teach us how to, he is our example. The word is our example. And you said in your word, God, in our weakness, in our weakness, that your strength is perfected. So I'm looking unto you for which come with my help. For you neither sleep, do you slumber. God, let deliverance by your word, Father God, be in this room. It is in this room by your word, God. This word will not return void. Father God, it will fall up on good ground. And it will bring forth 40, 60, 100 fold unto your glory. Deliverance is in this house. Father God, minds shall be set free and transformed for your glory. Mercy and grace shall be, the, uh, be their portion today, God. As you give us a hunger and a thirst for your word, that we may be able to fight with your word as we stand firmly on your word through the winds and storms that descend against us. And God, we have that joy. We know, oh my God, there's a new Jerusalem coming. We know, oh gracious and glorious God, that the roads will be made of gold. We know in that new Jerusalem, there'll be no sickness. There are oh, glory, hallelujah. There'll be no sickness there, oh gracious and glorious God. We know that you will be the light of the city. That means love will be, oh my God, my God, my God. That means love will be illuminating that place. That means love will be illuminating. If God, if you are the light of the city and you are love, that means love, true love. Love, your love, Father God, your mercy, your grace will be illuminating in that place. And God, while we are here, we thank you that you have given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And let our soul be anchored in you, O oh gracious and glorious God. For it is you who have delivered us from evil. It is you who have saved us and not we ourselves. And we surrender and we submit to you, God. We need your help, O oh, gracious and glorious God. But we can do nothing without you. But we can do all things through you. God, break the shackles off our minds, God. Let us begin to watch our intake, God. As you sanctify us through your word. For we are in this world. But we are no longer of this world. For well, you are our shield and our buckler, God. Teach us how to love one another, God. God, if there be anything in my heart or any heart in this room against anyone, Father God, remove it in the name of Jesus. Father God, let us have forgiveness for our mothers and for our fathers who may have left us, Father God. Let us have forgiveness for those who have wounded and molested us, Father God. Let us forgive those, Father God, who have tried to destroy us, Father God, because I say the word they tried, but you did not allow them to, you did not allow them to succeed, God. You did not allow them to succeed. You did not allow us to succeed to destroy ourselves. You interceded, God. You interceded in our behalf. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, 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 we thank you. Oh God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, God. Lord, destroy every stronghold. Renew every mind in this place on Zoom. Father God, in this place, renew the mind in your word. God, wash it and cleanse that mind for your glory, God. Break, destroy the shackles of the enemy, God. Freedom. Freedom, Lord. It is written where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let freedom be her portion, God. Not agony, not torment. We come against that spirit of torment. God, let freedom 
God, you touch sugar. In the name of Jesus, you touch and you deliver, God. You're the God that causes all to be free, God. You are the God that destroys the shackles. You break and destroy the shackles, God. You are the God that makes all things new, God. We thank you that we will never be the same because of what you have done in each and every one of our lives. And we are grateful for you have made us all new by your blood. And you have sealed us by your spirit. And you call us by name. We thank you. And in our weakness, we will boast. We will absolutely boast in your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.